Hi, Dr. Alex Touchstone here. Welcome to the third in a series of time-saving tips aimed at maximizing our efficiency with E4D. If you'll recall, last week we talked a lot about streamlined isolation and why it's so important as it relates to scanning. And if you'll also recall, we, we looked at this technique. We uh, had a very uh, well-isolated area, and that allows us to move that scanner uh, back all the way to the second molar and handle our scanning very efficiently and in a low-stress uh, manner. And so let's segue over into scanning today and look at the scanning sequence itself and evaluate whether or not we can improve that sequence and lower our procedural time. So first, let's focus on the old way of scanning, as I call it. And in this scenario, the the typical workflow is that we give anesthesia and then we wait about 10 minutes for the anesthesia to take effect. Uh, of course, after that, we prep and then we scan the prep. And with the HD1, this takes about two minutes. And then we're going to make a bite registration, trim the bite registration, and then scan that bite. And that takes another six minutes in the mouth. And so the total time for this methodology, excluding the prep, is about 18 minutes. Now let's see how we can compress that down. And first let's focus on what I call the anesthesia gap. You know, it takes, again, about 5 to 15 minutes or an average of about 10 minutes for anesthesia to take effect using traditional anesthetics. And during this time, oftentimes we just simply leave the room, you know, and, and the patient and the assistant uh, have a little chat. And, and so we need to close that gap. So let's use this streamlined method to close part of the gap, and then we'll look at another method to close all of the gap. All right, so imagine we have our HD wand, and we give anesthesia, again with traditional anesthetics, uh, and then during that anesthesia onset, we scan the opposing arch instead of simply waiting. So we're going to scan the opposing arch with the HD wand. That takes about two minutes. And then we're going to wait another seven minutes or so for the anesthesia to finish taking effect, prep the tooth or teeth, and then scan the prep and the buckle bite instead of a bite registration. And with the HD1, scanning the prep and the buckle bite takes about three minutes. And so our total time for this scenario, excluding the preparation itself, is about 12 minutes. Well, we've saved 30% of that time, haven't we? We've saved six minutes. But let's go down even further. And let's think about using the new Nevo wand along with a buffered anesthetic. Now, I'll get into this in more detail in a future webinar, but a buffered anesthetic reduces the onset time down to two minutes maximum. All right, so we can bring that anesthesia time down, our onset time down to two minutes. And during that time of onset, we can scan the opposing. And with the new Nevo system, we also scan the preoperative quadrant before we prep. And because this Nevo scanner is actually faster than the HD1, both the scanning of the opposing and the preoperative quadrant takes about two minutes. I'm going to prove this to you in just a moment. Then we prep the tooth or teeth. And using a new tool in the software, we erase the, uh, the teeth that we prepped on the preoperative model only and then scan the preps themselves only. That takes about one minute. Lastly, we scan the buckle or close bite, and that takes another minute. And so in this scenario, we've actually compressed our total time down to four to six minutes. Uh, so quite a, quite a huge reduction in, in time in this segment of our procedure. But let me just show you what this looks like clinically. This is an example of a case that I uh, restored three teeth. I restored the second molar, the second premolar, and the first premolar. And so while anesthesia is taking effect... Uh, I'm going to scan the preoperative quadrant, or I might have my assistant do this. And, of course, because we're doing this entire quadrant, we're going to go all the way up to the canine. And this, is, of course, is real time. This hasn't been sped up, so you can get a feel for just how fast and efficient this scanning process occurs. We can also get a sense for the, the layout of the, uh, the presentation. You can see ergonomically it makes sense because as we rotate the scanner, the model and the live view both rotate in concert with one another. makes it much more ergonomically logical, easy to understand while we're, while we're using it. So that's been done in about 45 seconds or so. Then we're going to generate a model. 
and we might use uh, the, um, uh, the low-density data view in order to judge or evaluate our um, scanning and make sure that we have all the scan data that we would like. Now, I know I missed some scan data on the linguals, but frankly, I don't care. Uh, I'm not going to be using this for anything other than occlusion uh, and also uh, for the um, uh, copying into the um, uh, prep model in just a moment. But for now, let's go ahead and scan the opposing model. So we click on the opposing uh, scan tab, and then we can begin scanning the opposing model. Notice I've got great isolation using the technique that I described last time. And I'm going to uh, isolate those teeth or dry them off again, and then go ahead and go through the scanning process for the opposing model. Uh, because the isolation is effective, it's quite easy to get this wand all the way back to the second molar. In fact, the tip of that wand is shorter than the combined tip and standoff of the HD wand. So you can see I can go all the way back to the second molar very effectively. And I'm going to go through my scanning process again. Now, one thing that's not being used on this particular example, but I do want to mention it or point it out, in the middle of the screen you see a little icon uh, where we can change the field of view. So we can increase or decrease the field of view as needed if we have things like cotton rolls or the tongue getting in the way. We can decrease that field of view and really zone in on the teeth themselves. Notice also that I'm scanning not only teeth, but also restorations. I'm scanning old amalgams. I'm scanning porcelain uh, on those crowns. And it really doesn't matter. Uh, it can be gold for, uh, for that matter. All those various materials can be scanned effectively without any sort of contrast medium, thus increasing the accuracy of the virtual models overall. All right, so we get that done, and uh, we want to finish that out and then take a look at our opposing and make sure that we're happy with it. So we're going to generate a model, and we'll take a look at that. And, of course, during this time, our patient has achieved full anesthesia because we've used this buffered anesthetic that, again, I'll describe in more detail in a future webinar. Uh, but for now, suffice it to say that we have our pre-op, we have our opposing, and we go and do our preps. After our preps are done, we click on the prep icon, as you see there, and we're asked uh, or given the opportunity to save some more time by copying the pre-op model into the prep model library. So yeah, we want to do that. We want to save some time. And so we click OK, and now we have a copy of the pre-op model in the prep model. Next, we're going to pick up this new tool called the eraser tool, and we're going to simply erase those teeth on the prep model now that we're going to scan again or that we have prepped. And so we select the eraser tool. We go over to our model, and we erase the data that represents the preps and perhaps some of the interproximal uh, or proximal space of the uh, adjacent tooth. Uh, because we certainly want to scan that as well if we've done any enamel plasty or what have you. Now, in a future webinar, I'll also show you how to use this eraser tool uh, to create a virtual reduction coping. And uh, we can look at that uh, at a later webinar. But for now, we've got our uh, prep model erased. And it looks like that. Now, granted, it doesn't look very pretty right now. And we might even want to erase just a little bit more right there. So let's go ahead and pick that up. But it has what we need. It has the data that we want to keep, and it has removed the data that we want to rescan. So imagine we go back in the mouth and we rescan our preps uh, only. Now, as I'm scanning this uh, prep on the second molar, I want you to notice just how deep this subgingival margin is. Um, Again, because of the accuracy of the system and the isolation technique that we described last time, uh, we can see those subgingival margins very clearly, especially with the use of the ice view, as you see there. All right, so now we've got our scans. We've got everything that we need in order to restore these teeth, and we've saved quite a bit of time. Now, remember, with the old method, I estimated our time at 18 minutes, excluding the preparation itself. With the new method using the HD wand and traditional anesthetics, along with using the scanning of the opposing while anesthetic is taking effect, we can save about six minutes, which brings it down to 14 minutes. That's a 30% reduction in time. 
Or if we want to go all the way to the edge of the envelope and use a buffered anesthetic and the new Nevo wand with the tools that were described in that method, we've now reduced our scanning time down to six minutes from 18 minutes. That's a huge time savings. Now, when I when I started this series, I promised that I would save you about 30 minutes per restoration. And with these first three time-saving tips that I've shown you, I've actually already achieved that goal, but I'm not finished yet. So be sure to come back to next week's episode where we'll learn some other methods for saving even more time. And until then, thanks and happy scanning.